opening up any uh, any boxes of minis, uh, which we have, um, I wanted to take a little bit of time tonight to go over some storytelling methods and then in front of you all, but also with you all, because you're not excluded from this, especially because everything that we have, everything that we have built to this point, you know, this hasn't been... It may say that it be yeah, it may be the Matty Morgs channel. This isn't the Matty Morgs story or the, or the Matty Morgs characters. Um, you know, th these are things that we build together, and I'm I'm very happy to share in that. Uh, and so tonight, if my cat doesn't, yeah, I'm talking to you, ma'am. Hi. By the way, oh, I'll take one step back even. Uh, trust a flump. If you didn't get the email, uh, affiliates are going to be getting more emotes that are going to open up to them. And uh, and so this is a good opportunity that if you have other ideas that you would like to make some emotes of some kind, um, this would be a good way to to jump in on it. And you know what? There's a pool of talented artists um, that you know uh, that I think could uh, give you some quality work. Um, you know, if you needed it. Uh, and also, uh, so, and there's also the, the sub, uh, the sub loyalty badges. Um, yep. And so, uh, you'll be able to get the, like, you, you already have the one for the five, 10 and $25 subscription tiers. You have, you have that unlocked, but now it'll open up even more. And so, uh, it's a great opportunity to, to get some more stuff. Like you could make, um, you know, you might be able to make, uh, like a, a Roger face palm or a Bartholomew love or something like that. Uh, or, you know, you could feature the, the Tyrannosaurus or something, uh, the Rakshasa, um, the, the skeleton. That's not a lich. It's a skeleton that just wears robes cause it likes it. Uh, but the, the skeleton that casts magic, that's also not jangle bones. If I'm correct, right? That, that character is not jangle bones. Yeah. Give it a look. Um, the extra emote slots are going to roll out over the course of uh, several months here until May. And, uh, okay, yeah, I'm correct. It is not Jangle Bones. I was a little confused at that at first, but, you know, such as with the ex constant exposure. And plus, you do have that lore tab that I, I should go back and double check. Lemek, okay. So that one's named. It's just, uh, it was just that, you know, Pete was being a little... Yeah, a, a little dodgy on the question. Hey, hey, get out of there. Hey, I'm looking at you. Yeah. Don't do it. All right, then. I had, I had stern words with my cat. <laughs> um, So, yeah, he, he's like, yeah, that's Magic Tyrannosaurus Rex, and that's Magic Rakshasa. <laughs> but the other ones have names. But anyway, yeah, I'd love to see... I, you know, I, I'd love to see, like, if someone dies, because, look, you guys have a kill counter. I think that is that is a part of the culture over at D&D &D time. And so you could have something like a res please or uh, or you could have, uh, you know, you could just kind of crop the like the red collar and the skull uh, as, as like an F uh, or a rip or something along those lines. I think you can do a lot of fun stuff. And, uh, and with the badges, uh, you could simply do that with, like, you could call them Bartholomew badges. And so the longer you subscribe, like, the, you get different Bartholomew badges. Um, I, I think it would be awesome uh, to do uh, for you all over there, Trust of Flump. You have some amazing long-term loyal people on your channel. And uh, it... Look, you guys... I'm on a soapbox. I swear we're going to get the storytelling, but this is part of D&D is table talk, right? <laughs> or is that just an excuse? Um... Having met the two of you, you know, being introduced by uh, by a, a couple players that uh, were in between the communities when I was first starting out, and they've been established in yours, uh, you two guys have been absolutely inspirational to me. Uh, the way that you conduct the channel, uh, the things that you do, um, and it has really... Um, I, I cannot count any successes that this channel has had without making sure that uh, you are acknowledged for the inspiration, for showing what can be done, um, and for just offering an awesome place to hang out on our corner of Twitch here in the D&D &D section. 
I'm a f oh oh yeah, you can even do it like that, right? Because you get subscriber, uh, you, you get subscriber, uh, fable, mythic, and legendary. So you could do it like that if you don't want to have like Bartholomew badges, or that's what they are. They're Bar Bartholomew badges, but they're they're tiered. So you know you just have like uh, A for subscriber, uh, F for uh, uh, the three month, M. Uh, on like a little dollar bill or something like that for the Bartholomew Bucks. M for the six month and then L for the year. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, so it'd, or it'd be like a coin, a coin or a little like a or like a little little p uh, paper money. That could be really neat. Yeah, trust a flump. And look, they're like little seventy-two by seventy-two icons. Uh, nothing, nothing terribly, uh, nothing terribly complicated. And if it's nothing that either you could do, there's plenty of people um, that uh, you could tap. I think who would be glad to do it uh, to contribute. Um, you know, whether it, it was anything out of pocket or not, you might have people willing to do it because uh, it's a work of passion. Um, so yeah, hey, let's let's make this year really awesome, everyone. And, and and I I just don't mean to talk to Trust of here. Let's all of us, right? This is there we're still this is we're still fresh, right? We're only barely two months into 2019. We have ten months ahead of us. Where are we gonna be in ten months? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna grow? Who are we gonna meet? And that's the adventure. And you know what? Isn't that a smooth transition now into how to go about planning an adventure in a, in a particular fashion? That's right. That's right, huh? You, you, you're picking up the mojo. All right. Maybe not. I'm just being, uh, you know what? In 10 months, maybe I'll look back at this video and I'll be like, oh, that was that was cringy. Was I really like that 10 months ago? Oh, cringe. Hey, it's GM Vault. Hola, GM Vault. By the way, GM Vault, um, pardon me. I have, uh, I have those minis that you won in the raffle last week. Did you want me to send those out to you, or am I hanging on to those? And Black Wolf is here, too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You, you do a very good bell sprout impression, you know, as you're kind of wiggling your, your tendrils here. And I'll tell you what, Trust a Flump. Heck, you know what you know what you could do if you really want to? Uh, get the image from the shirt we made on TKO, that one that was the flump that said put a ring on it. Take it and use that as like your $10 or your $25 uh, user emote. Put put a flump and then put a uh, something... Like, is... W would Pete be a, a Bartholomew face? Or, I mean, I imagine so, right? Um, but I, you could put a flump or you could put, like, Roger or, or something like that. Uh, but you have your three tiers even before the expansion of the of the uh, emotes. So consider, you know, consider that because these are really well-known characters. And also, uh, you know what, Trust a Flump? You all, yeah, you guys have an amazing roster of people who come and play and, and the characters are very well-known there. If you haven't incorporated BTTV into your channel, hashtag not sponsored, you may want to do that because then you could upload all sorts of uh, custom minis. So instead of stuff like uh, T. Celine or T. Jade or whatnot for our Tuesday characters, you know, you could have that be, um, you know, PJ, uh, 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 PJ Selcrest or something. Uh, or yeah, you are, we're on Team Flump. Because that's what the T's I wanted to stand for. Team Jade, Team Celine, etc. Team Many Flumps. So yeah, you, you could have like uh, PJ Selcress, uh, uh, PJ uh, Lance, PJ Flump or something like that. And then you would have all of these different assets that uh, uh, BTTV can, uh, can offer there. Including, hey, by the way, everyone, we have a new one. The Avocati. Um, so if you are in on the conspiracy, you are welcome to show your loyalty by flashing the avocado sign.
All right. <laughs> Against what, GM Vault? <laughs> and uh, GM Vault said you can hand them for now. I was looking on the orphanage to see if there's anything else. Gotcha, GM Vault. Just let me know whenever. I, I don't remember having that conversation if I should have sent them out or not. And I know your first order was kind of like in a hurry because you needed to get these uh, things for your players. To other vegetables and fruits. Well, I think, I guess it would only be to other fruits because I believe avocados are technically a fruit. So vegetables are, are their whole other thing. Um, <laughs> and butter. <laughs> Boy, uh, 2019 is being a very complicated year now. Uh, you know, a person can't form an entire secret society to infiltrate everything with avocados uh, without someone calling you out on it and saying, you know, <laughs> that you're being uh, exclusive to your inclusive desires. <laughs> GM Vault. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what, everyone? I have a blank piece of paper, and I'm not afraid to use it. Last week and this week, it's just the Avocado Scouts now. See? Avocado is, is a unifying force. <laughs> says Jim Bolt. Um, over the last two weeks, we've been making characters. We've made a setting. All kinds of things that are supporting a really cool story. And as is the tradition, usually on a Saturday night, we bring it all together and we come up with some kind of an adventure outline or an adventure proposal. And you know what? I, I don't know how you guys uh, do it, because really, Trust of Flump, every week you're coming up with three different concepts. Um, and again, that, that's another point that I, I really respect is you guys, uh, you know, you guys sit down and, and you think about these different, you know, uh, it's like seeds of adventure here. Hey, bro, player. And in the past, we've gone over, uh, we've gone over several different ways that you could tell a story. Uh, one of those is, I'll bring it up here. Once my computer stops chugging, hello. I have PDFs and Word open. Why are you chugging? Computers shouldn't chug on this. I don't know. I, I might have. Uh, I have Wonder Draft open. Well, anyway. All right. One of the methods that uh, that we made a video uh, for and how to plan an adventure, and this is really a novel writing technique. Uh, we used what's called the Snowflake Method. And if you want to read about it, you can look it up. Uh, I'll provide a link to this particular website. I'm not saying this one is better or worse than others. Uh, but it is a way to build out your story, right? Just one step at a time, like you're going to be drawing uh, a very complicated, uh, elegant snowflake. Well, it starts with a very simple design, and you simply add a little bit more and a little bit more to it, right? And now, all of a sudden, we are getting a very, uh, a very interesting fractal pattern. You know, the only one of its kind. And so we wrote an adventure using... Uh, using this method, the snowflake method. We also wrote an adventure using Freitag's pyramid. This is another uh, this is another good way to pl uh, to plot out a story. Uh, if you're writing a novel, or if you're writing a module, or some other adventure, you want to do a homebrew campaign, whether it's over the course of one level, or over the course of ten, or you want to go one to twenty, you know, just yeehaw, let's get her done. Hey, DMs, welcome. Oh, you no longer like olives on pizza, bro, player? Well, I'm with you on that. <laughs> Do DMs, says GM Vault. Uh, continuing the... You know what, uh, DMs, I hope you're keeping a list of all the unique pronunciations that are being inflicted on you. Uh, so we have... Uh, we have Freitag's Pyramid as another technique, and if this resounds with you, then write a story using Freitag's Pyramid. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know it's all out of love, GM Vault. I, I mean, th that's one of the jokes, is that uh, is that his name is mispronounced over on uh, um, Journeyman's website. DMs, 
then you know what? I will give you I will give you any olive I come across on pizzas or sandwiches, uh, and I will give you any pickles that are put on my sandwiches after I very kindly ask for no pickles. I confirm on the drive-through screen that there are no pickles on the sandwich. I look on the receipt and it says no pickles. And then when I open up my sandwich, there's pickles. You can have those pickles because those are very special pickles. They have to be, right? <laughs> GM Vault, you little scamp! <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you know, I'm famous on the internet. That's all I'm going to say. And it ain't for Twitch. <laughs> I better watch out. <laughs> you say it's free pickles, but then, uh, but then bro applier, it's also bad taste. And it makes the rest of my sandwich taste bad. So while the the, the uh, pickles could theoretically be included in the total cost, so I'm denying myself something I could have been paying for, uh, it is not worth the damage done to my sandwich to have uh, pickles included on it. So, uh, irreparable harm. Maybe not irreparable. You want to talk about harm to sandwiches? <laughs> Have you ever heard of the sandwich punch game? I'm just going to leave that out there. <laughs> Why do I hate America? Well, GM Vault, I'm the villain! <laughs> yeah, bro, plier, you know, tastes change over time. It's okay, and you'll find you'll find tastes that you didn't think you liked before. So, uh, so what we were talking about, uh, one time you didn't like dill pickets and I don't, now I don't mind them. All right. See, so you, you've softened. It hasn't been a full, you know, uh, you know, lawful good to chaotic evil swing, but now you're just, you know, you're tolerable of, of a particular type of pickle. Uh, for tonight, uh, tonight is going to be. A method that's going to be similar to an, a third type that we've used on the channel here. And the third type was called uh, the midpoint method. And in that method, you would have an idea such as um, farmer boy um, leaves the podunk village uh, to... Travel to the big city to request help with a uh, fire beetle infestation. And then, and because a lot of times when you tell a story, you have the beginning and the end. And at the end, you're like, yeah, so here we go. The, the farmer, you know, the farmer boy's gotten stronger. Uh, you know, and the final scene here. Um, uh, farmer boy stands over the dusting corpse of the uh, head vampire, having exacted his revenge for all that uh, the countryside has suffered under his rule. And so, you know, you, you say, yeah, there's like flames all around and, and there's magic effects happening. So, we, you know, we start off with like little simple, uh, you know, like you know, little SNES, like 16 bit music in, in the in the nice little tranquil villages. And then at the end, we get the full, you know, the concert, uh, like the the high quality audio of the uh, the symphony orchestra with uh, the chanting and everything. As now this farmer boy who is a farmer man, he's made it through this far. You know, and he stands atop, and, and maybe the irony of ironies, he set out to uh, to destroy the fire beetle infestation, and at the end, you know, the only true way to defeat this vampire lord um, is to make sure that, uh, you know, his heart is burnt up, 
And so, you know, as, as the vampire is there, kind of like slowly regenerating and taunting him, the, the farmer boy reaches into his pack, pulls out a fire beetle, and like shoves it into the vampire's chest. The the beetle just the, the beetle's reaction is to kind of like clamp with its uh with its little uh arms or whatever, its little little insect uh grabby legs. And then the boy just like uh, drives the drives his magical sword, which was his father's sword, but he didn't know his father was, you know, um was whatever, a paladin of the whatever and back in the day. Uh and so uh the this humble, simple fire beetle, much like the representation of the farmer boy is the thing that defeats this big, you know, 200 year old vampire Lord as uh, its innards like Im immolate the vampire uh, from the outside. And the most mighty monster in the land is laid low by our, a CR zero fire beetle, which at the time probably almost kicked the butt of our of our level one. A uh, farmer boy who is just leaving the homestead to go to the big city. Bada boom. Look at that, everyone. We have an entire story. This is your bonus. And then you say, well, what happens in between? Mm. Stuff? <laughs> How do you get from that, right? And so with the midpoint method, you say, all right, so at some point in time, you know, he's got to realize his destiny. Uh, he, ha you know, he's going to... Uh, find his father's sword and awaken the magic inside and, you know, all this other stuff. Um, you know, if you have a story that is involved around this, I'm not trying to put it down. I'm, I'm trying to stick with generic tropes because, of course, look, every story is a story is a story is a story. There's an older story in which there's a quote that says there's nothing new under the sun. And some might argue that that, that the, even that old story is a retelling of even older tales. Um, so even, you know, uh, we, we have copy pasta emotes in, uh, <laughs> we have copy pasta emotes here on Twitch, uh, which if you all want to, you know, if you all want to use it, you're welcome to do so. And so look, uh, copy pasta has been something we've done for a long time. So here we go. And then you say, all right, so I have my midpoint and, and now, and now you go back and you say, all right, so what happens in between, uh, leaving, you know, leaving the, the house to go to the millennial fair, if this was Chrono Trigger, uh, uh, you know, what happens if he, to get his, uh, to his father's sword, you know, this is, uh, arrival at the big city and you see, and you see what we're doing here using this midpoint method. We keep going through the, t you know, through this. And, and kind of in a, in a logical order, we continue to add these midpoints between defining events. And suddenly, you know, we have a list uh, that has been made step by step as we ask ourselves, how did we get from point A to point B? Well, with a point C. But how did we get from point A to point C? Well, with D. And then C to B? Well, to, well if, you wanna, if you wanna label it otherwise. Vehemut, thank you so much for that Prime subscription. That means a lot to me. It really does. And you know what? Oh, hey, uh, uh, hey, Dark Wolf is here. Is there a bro plier? See, you have a mighty destiny. Then you are the farmer's kid. You are the farmer's kid. Uh, maybe you're lactose intolerant, and uh, and yet you grew up on a dairy farm. And so, unfortunately, it's given you. You know, it's given you this gift, which you probably consider as very embarrassing. If you're lactose intolerant, you, you know, you have a bunch of cheese, you know, nature's going to take its course. But here you are. After all this time, you've turned your weakness into a strength. And if that's what it takes to defeat the uh, the vampire lord, who's going to laugh at you now? Um, who's going to laugh at you now when your unique gift to the world is used to end the vampire lord's cruel reign? Yeah, GM Vault. Yeah, you can you can uh, have you can make that into a minutia, and then of course like you've already written your book by that point, right? Um, I would prefer tasty pasta, not not copy pasta. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, Dark Wolf, would you be so kind to type in avocado with a capital A for me? Aha, she's in on it. How does it look for you, Dark Wolf? Does it look good? Uh, 
All right, there we go then. If you don't see it in chat, uh, it, because it's a BTTV emote, you'd have to have BTTV enabled in your browser. And that stands for Better Twitch TV. It allows for channels to use more emotes. <laughs> so here we have a midpoint method, and it's it can be methodical, right? What I want to do tonight, with all of the information that we have gleaned, yeah, one of us, one of us. Hey, wait till Del Corn gets here, Dark Wolf. I mean, I don't know if he's here lurking or he. Uh, sometimes he comes on a little later at night. Uh, but once Del Corn is here, because Del Corn loves avocado, uh, aka uh, <laughs> he calls guacamole Barovian salsa. Um, <laughs> um, we can make sure that we give Del Corn plenty of avocado love and respect. Um, all right, so what I wanted to do here for tonight, because this week was really, it was interesting in so much we had our four characters, we built a basic story off of the four characters, which was really about a dungeon, and the dungeon's the central point of the, uh, of the adventure. Uh, and then from there, we ended up making a map in MS Paint, and, uh, and after MS Paint, we then went and made a map in Wonder Draft. A little bit more detailed, we added something like, here's a little farmer village. Um, you know, here's like an abandoned uh, scout tower that was on the border uh, between the dry lands, which had the uh, the cult complex to Jueblex, the ooze demon. Uh, you know, we have our different regions. It's showing that there's hills and, and whatnot here. There's the, the, the lake uh, and, uh, and these rivers that are, are flowing from the mountains off the screen here and, uh, and down further and further. Uh, and so we made all of this supporting material and all of it was adding and adding and adding more to the area and the story. And I'll tell you as a, as a dungeon master, if you're comfortable with the setting, you can do so much improvisation and adaptation that you don't have to worry if you go off the rails, at least not a lot. Hopefully your party is willing to, you know, work with you and not just completely uh you know if you need to get from the gnome town here in the in the southeast and you say well i need you to cross you know cross the lake and talk to uh talk to the grain miller that you know is in the uh in north lake village uh like apparently that's the name of that village now we didn't name it when we made the map uh and then they say well instead of going to north lake uh let's Let's go fishing, or let's just take the river and go off map or something. You know, hopefully you're going to have uh, players and player characters that would abide by that, but that's more of a circumstance at your table. So anyway, we made a map, and now what I wanted to do uh, is take that and the information from the villains, and instead of the midpoint method, I simply want to make a timeline of events that have occurred. And I, I want to do this because this is going to be our story. And if you do something like a timeline, it can help you be a lot more flexible. You'll still arrive generally at the points you want to make, but you can approach them from different directions. GM says, I know every shopkeep and NPC in the starting town of my campaign. Yeah, overplay in your world, not your plot. Uh, that, that, so yes, if you know... Uh, you know, weather patterns, or you know the general culture of the place. You can provide answers that make sense. You can keep the game flowing. And it's very immersive for your players when, they, when they're at your table. It's uh, Avocado Town. <laughs> so maybe avocados are sort of like the, 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 uh, the, the spawn, like the, the gelatinous spawn of Jewiblex. Uh, because like each avocado contains like a little green slime inside of it. <laughs> That's the local name. So instead of being an advocate for uh, for Jewiblex as like the head cultist, you're an avocado, and that's a colloquial term for the advocate of a of your demon patron. <laughs> 
for the timeline, I recommend working backwards by asking yourself why at least five times. Yes, um, if, uh, uh, Technotron calls it the three wise, and, and you're saying you want to go. You're you're a five wise guy. <laughs> um, an avocadite. <laughs> oh, DM or not DMs, uh, Del Corin better not listen to this because we're only fueling his fires that avocado or are you know the devil's food or something along those lines. In this case, it'd be a demon food. Yeah, a bunch of wise guys around here. Uh, but I, I agreed with the methodology. Um, in you're creating the cause and effect timeline going back and forth, and that could very well be so. If you want to start at the end with uh, what we were talking about, the farmer's, you know, the farmer's son is standing over the, the quickly, you know, the, the ashing uh, corpse of the vampire, and you say, Why? Well, he shoved a, 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 a fire beetle in his chest. Why? You know, it's the ultimate weakness and blah, blah, blah. And then you see how we're, we're going backwards. Uh, the town, one of the areas used to in the timeline, bro, applier. <clears throat> Pardon me. So you can go backwards or because we've done a lot of homework in, in concept, uh, we can we can start. Uh, well, I mean, really on a timeline, you could start anywhere, especially on a computer. Um, if we start at the, uh, at the beginning, it would be Hobgoblin Hard. uh, driven out of his command in a foreign land stumbles across Jew of Lex ruin is converted raises a cult and travels to this region's ruined Uh, we can call it Demon Gate, Demon Temple, uh, Cult, whatever. Uh, converts. Uh, we didn't really say it, um, if it was a politician or a sheriff or something. I think going with a, a, a politician, some someone that everyone likes, so we'll say uh, converts the mayor of North Lake and now serves the current Jewablex host. The mayor uses his influence and the cult to begin kidnapping people for sacrifice. This is where the game begins. Looks like Biddy's head is layered over the chat. Oh yeah, so I guess he's it kind of looks like he's poking his head through uh in in between. Coffee Cat's quick you and three others need to seal the doors. Welcome Coffee Cat. And by the way everyone, uh c please give a congratulations to Coffee Cat who just reached affiliate status. Uh, yesterday, I believe. So 
So now, as the DM, your copy pasta failed you. No, Volvo. We were just talking about copy pasta too. Hey, you're you're very welcome, Coffee, and I hope that you you get continued growth. Hey, make sure you you talk to J Man also. Let if J Man doesn't know already, uh, tell him. GM Vault is a D affiliate, not an A affiliate. <laughs> There's been an amicable split. <laughs> now, this is a summary, by the way, of what we ended up writing for the villains, right? We made our two main villains, and because of the random prompts that we drew together, uh, we made a very cool story about the origins of the villains and therefore the, the undermining or the underpinning, uh, the underpinnings of the game. So we're referencing back to that. So the game begins with the PCs uh, are in a town. People are uh, people are starting to go missing, um, and uh, you know, so PCs notice um, some missing people. Uh, the low hanging fruit first, uh, such as criminals and drifters. As well, um, some reports from rangers in the forest say that the plant life is dying or in some, ca some cases changing. Right? We're planting clues. My stream did not let me catch anything you said. Oh, shoot. I, I'm sorry, Coffee. Yes, Avocati people unite. Welcome to the Avocati. Now, this is where we can... It's not quite the midpoint method, but we know at some point... Um, the PCs are going to confront the Hobgoblin in a mid-boss style fight. After defeating him, they will learn or they will be set on the path to truth that pulls together much of the evidence they found before. Then we know at some point in time, uh, PCs are going to confront the mayor with proof, and the mayor will fight and run away. PCs must chase the BBEG, the big bad evil guy, to the uh, cultist refuge to prevent Jewablex from being summoned, make their way inside the dungeon to find the host of the demon. Epic last battle where the PCs must make the moral decision to kill an otherwise good man who even helped them along the way with subtle clues. Again, this is in the, if, if you're not sure, like, wh where are we coming up with this? Uh, it's in the villain worksheet that we worked on. Uh, epic last battle where the PCs must make the moral decision to kill an otherwise good man who even helped them along the way with subtle clues. Return as heroes. Is 
It was buffering. Yeah, uh, Coffee Cat. So on. Do you have a name for that piece yet? Or otherwise, it's uh, it's looking really strong, even if it doesn't have a name yet. Now from here, you know, it doesn't have to be in a particular... It doesn't have to be in a particular order. You know, we don't have to go exactly to a midpoint. In fact, as we're coming down this timeline, as we're establishing it, uh, we can even uh, we can even go. Uh, let's see. There is much power in it. Uh, from being summoned, make their way inside the dungeon. All right, so now we go from between the the PCs must chase the BBEG, uh, and here um, they uh, crawl across the map and encounter the abandoned frontier tower that has been taken over uh, by a squad of humanoid oozes uh this represents people succumbing to the influence not just animals and you're like okay well what do you mean well the closer to the old cult temple they get the more they see strands of ooze and even ooze infested animals uh, begin to track and or attack them along the way but we start off with simple things right in fact we can start off with the plant life but now uh, but then after you know a couple days of travel it's not just the plant life now the local wildlife. So there's like a deer, you know, and it's it, it's like crying ooze and it's kind of pouring out of its nostrils and everything as it looks. And then, uh, you know, it uh, it gives like a bubbling, uh, like a weird bubbling hiss and you can see ripples under its skin. Uh, and then it starts charging after you, uh, after the party. And this is an encounter and they slay it. And they realize that uh, this deer has been like infested with an ooze. And... Um, and so it's showing the creeping control and the corruption that Jewablex is exerting over the land. And they say, okay, so it's not just the trees, but now it's also the deer and maybe like a wild boar or something. And then you get to this tower that we just randomly put in there. There's really no reason to put this, this tower, but you know what? It was sort of on the frontier. It's across the river. It's like a watchtower. Well, now it's a stronghold uh, for Jewablex's agents. And so now... Uh, we come across, and it could even be, uh, oh no, it's the old farm family. And and we talked to the old farm family that lived on this farm village. Uh, you know, we talked to them a couple weeks ago in in-game time. You know, someone came down the river and must have, uh, you know, converted them. Plus, it'll give a taste to the PCs of what's to come, Right? Wait, so that means the mayor might just be infested, and what do we do? And and you can have it be, well, yeah, death death can probably you know save them from the curse. You know, maybe there's something along the lines of um, if you count these oozes as fiends, you know, maybe you might be able to um, uh, turn them uh, with paladin turn or I, I does the clerics? I know they get turned on dead. I don't. Uh, does undead affect fiends too? I forget offhand in fifth edition. Uh, so you might be able to, to scare them out and recover, and that could give a, some glimmer of hope. But then once we get to the mayor, who's inside the cult temple, you realize that you know the the infestation is too far gone. Um, they already saw what happened uh, to the prior person who was host to this uh, primary uh, Jewablex uh, little face hugger thing. Um, you know, he was just kind of left, uh, probably even like a literal, a hollowed corpse, 
Um, so while he still had his mind in a way, um, you know, his innards were kind of just like, like corrupted and turned into ooze. So really, you know, his body, you know, his mind, whatever's left of it is still his own, but it's only controlling ooze. He's not, he doesn't have to eat or anything because his, all his organs have been like atrophied and, and have been consumed, um, in order to keep him going. And so he could just eat and eat and eat, uh, and drink water because there's an ooze inside him. And so this is what happens to those who bear the the host uh, or the host for too long, uh, because you could also have something like this um, epic last battle where the PCs must make the moral decision to kill an otherwise good man who helped them. Uh, and then um, once put down in a desperate uh, attempt to continue existing a party member is oozed. I guess that's just even a, a normal verb. <laughs> what do they do? They know what this thing does to its hosts. Kill their friend or try to save him or her. And so the la the last boss fight uh, is is a moral decision, but for combat, it's probably against something like just a little ten hit point ooze, nothing terrible, nothing a bunch of like level ten characters or whatever couldn't bring down, a bunch of level eight characters couldn't bring down. You know, if we want to make this like a one to eight adventure, we could easily do that. Um, Black Wolf is eating no more. You ooze, you lose. Um, but you see, we didn't have that idea before. But because we're making a timeline of events, uh, we can go back and forth. Hey, Renegade Mac and Cheese. Uh, how are you going to do my first campaign as a DM since I moved? Still not sure what module to run. Already did. Lost Mine of Fandelver. Wait, uh, waiting or wanting to do something else. Well, uh, Dark Wolf might be able to give you a suggestion because she ran Lost Mine of Fandelver. And has moved into something that is more natural. Uh, you know, like a natural fit from one to the next. If you're looking for other modules that start at level one, you have uh, Curse of Strahd. That's a one to ten. The Tomb of Annihilation is a one to ten. And... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Pardon me. Um, I... <laughs> Tales from the Yawning Portal. I guess uh, I guess that's the, that's the subtitle, right? If I've had a long day and I'm broadcasting, uh, it's Matty Morgs presents uh, Tales from the Yawning. <laughs> Tales from the Yawning Morgs. Uh, return his heroes to a unified area, right? Because. The, the gnomes and, and, to an extent, the, the people who came to live here in what we're calling now uh, North Lake, um, you know, there, there's a heavy gnome presence, but the dwarves and whatnot from the mountain all came down, so it's a mixed town kind of on the frontier. Well, the people who live down here are the, are the, one, are the family members who fled during the original conflict between the patron, the Archfey patron, and the fiend patron. Um... So they weren't cultists themselves necessarily, they were descendants. And so that's how we can get some tieflings and, and such. New, It's a new campaign, uh, and it's not Adventures League rules. That's on Wednesdays. Now, as we get good ideas, where does that fit in the timeline? Uh, at some point, we're probably going to want them to go visit the other village. Because it's probably being set up as a red herring. Whether your party knows that, well, hopefully they don't know it. Uh, PCs knows missing people. 
as well as some of that. So they go to confront uh, the Hobgoblin in a mid-boss uh, fight style fight. All right, so here then... Um, uh, requested to travel uh, to... Uh, I don't know, we can call it just something kind of nice and easy. Open Acres. To investigate. As they are the descendants of those who made people go missing so long ago. And this is going to be, this is its whole other adventure. Traveling there and then interacting. Um, at some point, though, it's going to be... Um, Discover the Hobgoblin and chase him to the temple. That's where they're going to confront it. Although it'd be to the uh, to the outer temple ruins. Uh, let's see now from here. We could uh, we could say something along the lines of um, they can see but not access the inner cloisters. Now they confront the hobgoblin and they think they they, they think they killed the cult leader and in a way they did because the mayor is like the mayor's the leader of the cult but he's not the cult leader if that makes sense. Uh, so they can see but not access the inner cloisters. Um, they confront the hobgoblin and are probably going to kill him and, uh, and route, uh, you know, route some of these, uh, cultists. Uh, return home as heroes and get in some downtime. Downtime is important as a DM. Please make sure you can provide an opportunity for downtime. I mean, it's your story. I would suggest creating the opportunity for some downtime. However, after a few weeks lull, the kidnappings continue. Uh, then what? Then what? Thinking around here. Renegade says, I guess I'll let my the players decide what to run and help them build up uh, and help them build players going on that. I'll let them know that this campaign will be a module and the next campaign will be a homebrew. Yeah, look, communication, Renegade, communication is key. Communicate with your players, and if they're giving you feedback, um, then, you know, listen to it. Ultimately, you are the DM. And, you know, communicate, make wise calls. Uh, but, yeah, you have a lot of options. If you want to start a brand new module, like, a, you know, at a low level, you have plenty of options out there for it. Plenty. Exactly, Renegade. Now, hopefully, you, you're going to still tell a coherent story, and it's not going to turn into something you hoped it wouldn't. I mean, you may want to you may want to run Lord of the Rings, and hopefully, it doesn't end up like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. But you'll take a solid middle ground, right? Yes, so that's how you win D and D. I mean, a lot of people ask, so like, is there a timer? Do you only go for a certain number of, of days or years or something? If you want to win D and D, show up to a session and have fun. Congratulations, you've won Dungeons and Dragons, and come back and win it again next week too. Yeah, I mean, try to avoid a hard railroad. You can provide suggestions. Or you can say, uh, you know, you could provide a choice that's kind of very well disguised as a, a as a choice, if you get what I'm saying.
So we've had some travel. Uh, at some point in time, then, uh, to chase, they're going to have to... Um, it could just teleport out of there, the mare, the, like the infested mare. Uh, so it will be some travel time. It'll be some countryside uh, exploration. I think what we're planning here would be excellent. I mean, you're talking about running a low-level adventure or a module. I think what we're planning here would be a really good 1 to 8. I think a 1 to 8 adventure. I mean, maybe a 1 to 10. It could be arbitrary. All right. You must go here, but more suggested they go the way the module states. You could make a plea that they must go here and do something, and maybe they'll even listen to you. Um, out of character, if you just say, look, just go to this dungeon, please. It has treasure I want to give you. Just go. Then you're kind of ruining it for other uh, for other people. And, and if it does get into a bunch of side table talk, then, you know, bring them back around and present them their options again. All right, I get what you're saying. Here's what we're looking at. You know, you could you could go to the temple, you could skip it, and you could go straight to the guard tower. Or you could just uh, even skip that and just uh, ride, ride the river, right? If we're using our map as an example. Ride the river uh, to the bridge and then take the bridge west until you get to the old temple and there you go. All right, I got to get up and take a break. I got to walk around here. Ugh, it has been a day, everyone. So let's take a break. And when we come back, let's finish uh, putting our thoughts to paper. And, um, and and just work on maybe refining the story, making some, some character references, uh, finding... Let, we can load up the characters and say, oh, yeah. So she's really involved in a, in a, a part of the adventure like this. And we can see where we go from there. Yeah, Renegade, this is what we're here for, man. Um, uh, we are, uh, we're here to help uh, newcomers. We're here to help answer questions. Um, Deem the DM, thank you very much for that follow. Uh, we have a mentor network on our Discord, and you're always allowed to ask questions in our mentor channels. Um, there's We have weekly inspiration stuff if you need uh, help thinking of something. We're here for you. Uh, we're, we're here for you. Maddie, nap time. <laughs> All right, let's take a, a let's take a little bit of a break, and when we come back, um, you know, we'll be a little bit more bright eyed and bushy tailed. You know, go out and uh, get the blood flowing. Maybe get a nice big pitcher of ice water or something, and uh, let's keep the ideas going. We'll we'll finish this up. In fact, we can even talk about the the dungeon itself since we have a broad story to tell and the dungeon is going to be a part of it we can examine what we could do to like put into the dungeon